This video contains information that will help you with your CPCS renewal for the 360 degree excavator. It has been prepared based on the CPCS renewal fact sheet for the 360 degree excavator. Let's get straight into it. Preparation for work. The 360 degree excavator is commonly used across a variety of sectors, including construction, demolition, piling and extracting. They are available in a wide range of sizes. The majority of excavators carry out work using a bucket and numerous attachments are available that widen the scope of the machine, such as grabs, breakers and shears. 360 degree excavators are either tracked or wheeled. This video covers both types. Daily and periodic checks form part of the operator's duties. Checks must follow the manufacturer's instructions and where any defects are noticed by the operator, they must be reported immediately and before the machine is used. They must also seek appropriate advice from those who could decide whether the machine can be put to work or not. An operator could incorrectly diagnose what they consider to be minor faults, such as a small leak from the latch cylinder in a quick hitch coupler, where in fact it could be severe, possibly leading to an injury as the machine's performance may significantly deteriorate as components fail. For example, an oil leak in the quick hitch coupler could cause a loss of pressure and release the attachments, which could then fall off and injure nearby workers. As 360-degree excavators use a wide variety of tools and attachments, it is now common to use a quick hitch coupler to connect an attachment to the machine's dipper arm. However, buckets and other attachments have been known to detach unintentionally during the work causing injuries and death. On semi-automatic types, a locking pin is used to prevent the latch or lock from opening, and this needs to be inserted into the correct hole. Investigations into attachments that have become detached have shown that the locking pin was missing or inserted into the incorrect hole. The suitability of a working tool must be checked before it is attached to the machine using the quick hitch coupler. Some tools such as hydraulic breakers may not be recommended by some quick hitch manufacturers as vibrations cause rapid wear on coupler components, increasing the risk of failure. On fully automatic quick hitch couplers, it is vital that the operator immediately after coupling the attachment ensures full hydraulic pressure is applied to the coupler's locking system. For all types, the operator must further exit the cab and check both visually and physically to ensure that all locking pins are inserted correctly and retained and secure or that latches are fully engaged and locked. If a tool that requires pressurized oil has been used, care must be taken when removing the tool, particularly when disconnecting the oil feed and the return lines. High pressure oil may be within the hydraulic system and must be exhausted or relieved and the engine stopped before the lines are disconnected. Manufacturer's guidance as to the pressure in the relevant part of the hydraulic system must be followed as unscrewing a coupler to release any oil pressure must not be undertaken as an injury can occur through injection of high pressure oil. Protective gloves should be worn as the oil couplers could be very hot and burn unprotected skin. On machines where a bucket or attachment is directly coupled to the machine's dipper arm, changing an attachment means that the holes of both attachment and the dipper need to be aligned to allow the pins to be inserted with requiring a level of skill from the operator. It is common to use an assistant to guide the operator in aligning the holes. The operator remains responsible for the operation and must not allow the assistant as has occurred to insert their fingers into the pinholes to check alignment. Any small movement of the dipper arm or attachment could cause injury. Working efficiently. 360 degree excavators are used by a wide number of plant hire companies and contractors. With fuel costs now forming a major part of production overheads, the operator can minimize the fuel that they use by working the machine efficiently without the need to use maximum engine speed. In nearly all cases manufacturers indicate both the operator's manual and on the machine's rev counter that the optimum engine speed or range that will ensure the engine transmission and hydraulic system run efficiently. The majority of 360 degree excavators are now fitted with selectable working modes that optimize the engine speed and hydraulic settings for different types of work, such as grading or heavy excavation. Operators should familiarize themselves with each setting and select the one that ensures that the machine is working most efficiently for that operation. This reduces the amount of fuel used and aids production and makes the machine easier to operate as there is generally better control of the hydraulics. 
Due to the reliability of modern machines, the operator should switch off the excavator's engine when they leave the cab, even for short breaks, to further reduce consumption of fuel. Lifting and using attachments. 360 degree excavators are commonly used to lift a suspended or slung load, for which certain precautions need to be taken. Before any load is lifted, the lifting operation needs to be properly planned, and the operator or other relevant persons need to ensure the machine's approved and equipped to lift a suspended load. The manufacturer's lifting capacities chart or data must be read in order to determine the maximum load that can be lifted at a particular reach and height. The reach is usually the horizontal distance from the center of the slew ring to the vertical center line of the lifting hook. If the manufacturer's data is not known, guidance states that the excavator must not be used for lifting duties. The majority of lifting charts for 360-degree excavators also show the weight that can be lifted, both of the front and rear of the machine, as well as separate calculations for lifting over the side. Due to the narrow chassis of tracked or wheeled excavators, the lifting capacity is, in most situations, reduced on wheeled machines. The lifting charts will indicate lifting capacities in a variety of situations when stabilizers are fitted. Boom lowering control devices, commonly known as check valves, prevent the boom from lowering in case of hydraulic failure, such as a burst hose, and these need to be fitted along with an overload warning device on the excavator, where maximum lifting capacity exceeds one ton. According to regulations, all lifts have to be properly planned by a trained and experienced person, and should take into account all factors in order to minimize the risk of an overturn or failure. When a lift is being planned, the weight of the lifting accessories, such as lifting chains, need to be added to the weight of the load, and include any packaging. If the bucket is to remain attached to the machine, the lifting capacity needs to be reduced to take into account the weight of the bucket, and a quick hitch coupler if fitted. When the lifting accessory, such as a two-leg chain is attached to the hook mounted on a quick hitch coupler, the operator needs to tilt the coupler by extending the bucket ram sufficiently to ensure that the chains hang freely and does not foul any part of the coupler. Before any attachments are fitted or used, their intended use, their weights and required working radius needs to be known. The machine may be able to use an attachment at the minimum radius, its overall weight may mean it can become unstable if it is used beyond the intended working reach, meaning the reach of the machine is restricted. The operator must have sufficient training on the attachment and be aware of any issues that could cause instability or damage to the machine. For example, sudden and harsh use of the controls can, if using suspended clamshell bucket, cause a bucket to swing excessively and both strike part of the machine, and also create instability, particularly when loaded. Working safely and with others. If the operator needs to leave the cab, even if it's just to check something externally, it's good practice and important that they switch off the engine and lower all equipment to ground level, even if it's just to check something externally. It has been known for operators, when leaving the cab, to keep the safety bar in the active position and have inadvertently moved an operating lever, which has caused unintentional machine movement. Accidents have also happened when the operator has chosen to operate a lever from outside of the cab for example, to change a bucket leading to unintentional movement and injury. After entering the cab, but before starting the engine, the operator must check that any clothing is not caught on the operating levers, as assistants, or those within the operating radius, have been injured as the machine starts to slew unintentionally when the engine is started. Assistants or banksmen, are commonly used to assist in excavating and lifting operations. The hazardous area for any 360-degree excavator whilst working is within the operating radius over 360 degrees. The operator must ensure that all assistants and others must be kept clear of the working area and being a safe place when work is being carried out for example, when loading the machines, such as dump trucks or forward tipping dumpers. Excavator operators should never load the machine unless the driver is in a safe position. In the case of a dump truck, the driver can stay inside a protective cab, but in the case of the forward tipping dumper, the operator must leave the driving seat and stand in a safe place, so they cannot be struck by the excavator's bucket or any overspill from the bucket. If the excavator is working within a restricted or enclosed area, the operator must take into account both the working radius, reach and slew, as well as height and boom, particularly where the operations are close to pedestrians or moving vehicles, when appropriate methods to prevent contact must be taken. Stability. 
Although 360-degree excavators are designed to be stable, operators need to be aware of the safe parameters, as the machine can become unstable if they are exceeded. Although the majority of machines can travel with a suspended load, or slung load, providing certain requirements are followed, traveling on uneven ground with a suspended load can cause the load to swing, making the machine less stable. Slewing with a suspended load too fast, particularly if operating near maximum radius, the momentum of the load can cause the law to overshoot its intended placing point, and has been known to strike structures or other machinery in the area. When traveling the machine, open down slopes in principle, the majority of the excavator's weight should be kept uphill. Traveling up an incline normally means extending the dipper and keeping the bucket close to the ground. If the boom in the dipper are fully crowded back, the weight bias is towards the rear of the machine, and this has caused excavators to roll over backwards. In most cases, best good practice suggests that the lifting of loads on slopes is not recommended, as this will cause instability. If the excavator doesn't lift a load whilst on a slope, or is traveling down a steep slope with the suspended load, the potential increase in radius means the machine is less stable and could overturn. Let's do some questions to test your knowledge. Question 1. When an attachment has been fitted using an automatic quick hitch coupler, what must be checked immediately after coupling up the attachment? A. Ensure that hydraulic pressure is released from the coupler's locking system. B. Ensure that full hydraulic pressure is applied to the coupler locking system. C. Visibly check that the latch is at a 90 degree angle to the coupler. D. Ensure that the attachment is within working capacity of the machine. The correct answer was B. Question 2. Why is an excavator traveling forward with a suspended load down a steep slope hazardous? A. Extra strain is placed on the track motors causing possible failure. B. The radius of the load increases affecting stability. C. The operator can lose sight of the load. D. The additional weight will cause the upper structure to slew around and create instability. The correct answer was B. Let's do a recap of what has been covered during this video. Do you know? What actions to take if a defect on the machine is found? Why should operators not ignore any faults that they find? What the precautions to take are when fitting an attachment using a quick hitch coupler? Why and how the operator should thoroughly check that a quick hitch coupler is fitted correctly? Why some attachments are not suitable for quick hitch couplers? The precautions to take when disconnecting or connecting high pressure oil lines? Why a machine's fuel consumption is becoming important? What procedures must be taken when lifting suspended loads with the excavator? Why the understanding of the manufacturer's lift capacity charts is important? What needs to be taken into account when planning to lift a load? What to consider when selecting an attachment? What precautions need to be taken before the operator leaves the cab of the machine? Why operating levers should not be operated from outside the cab? What precautions need to be taken when working with and near others? What to take into account when loading vehicles? What precautions to be taken when working in confined or restricted areas? What effects uneven ground can have when the machine is being traveled? How traveling and working on inclines can cause machine instability? We hope this video has been useful in helping you prepare for your CPCS 360 degree excavator renewal test. Good luck, and if you require any further advice, please get in touch. JTW Construction Training. Learn today, build tomorrow.